Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to a segment where we are discussing the unfortunate news that John Philippe Bamman has suffered yet another freak injury in training and looks set to miss the rest of this season now, which is, you know, you couldn't get more of a kick in the teeth, could you? If, well, not just for us as fans, but certainly for John Philippe Gabamon himself. It looks as though, the good news is it looks as though he doesn't need surgery, as the news confirmed this morning, but even still it's a hammer blow for everyone involved. Terry, I'll come to you first. Mate. What's your take on this news? Where, where, where do we go from here with Gabamon? He doesn't need a surgeon, does he? He needs an exorcist. He's just the most cursed player like I've ever known. Like I, I feel terrible for him. Like it's such a good, like, like it was the only positive from that palace result, wasn't it? That he'd come on the pitch and regardless of how we, you know, of how he played or how he performed, it was like we finally saw this player. He's he's been injured for two years and hardly, you know, hasn't hardly kicked the ball since we got him. And he gets back on the pitch at the end of it as like a you know reward for all this you know progress. And I I wasn't expecting big things off from this season anyway. I was thinking you know what even though decore has got injured, I think we'll see him come on in 10, 15 minute cameos for the rest of the season. And some games he won't come on, and we'll get him in pre season, and he might be a starter from next season or a potential starter. And um, to the surprise of absolutely no one, you know, bad luck struck again. The information that comes out, I don't even think anyone can take any heart in it because they said freak injury with the last one and he was out for you know longer than he was for the first, um, or it felt like that anyway. Um, and he said he didn't need surgery with his first injury and then he made it worse and he did need surgery in the end. And it's just like, I think now the way the club are probably going to have to look at it is when they put the 25-man squad together for next season, you know, when all the transfer business is done and players been let go, he's going to be the 25th man, isn't he? I don't think they're going to make any plans to include him as a, as a realistic option for the whole season because no, through, you know, no fault of his own, he's not reliable enough. So they can't make plans, which includes having him as a, as a key player. I think he's going to be the 25th or the 26th man in the squad where if he's fit, that's nice. We might find somewhere for him, but we're assuming he's not going to be. So hey, I feel terrible for him. Hope he gets no, he's back. Basically, he's basically taking the baton on from Mo Besic next season. <laughs> I don't think he'll ever be that, that much in the wilderness. I even think with the injuries, he's closer to the team than Mo Besic, but he's he's just a really unlucky, really injury-prone player, isn't he? I know this one's been a contact injury with another player like, going into him and or falling on him or whatever it was. Um, and there's nothing he can do about that. That's not his fault. That's that's just something that happens. But, it, you know, that could have happened in a game. That You know, he's going to make contact, isn't he? So I, I, I'll just reiterate, I think he's the 25th man in the squad now. He's, he's in the squad for next season, but I think it, there'll be no plans made. No, There'll be no 11 or first or second 11 mapped out with him in it because they just know he's not going to be likely to be well, playing. He's not reliable enough. Yeah, they don't know whether he's going to be fit and available to call upon. He'll be the he'll be the spare man, and you know that's just nothing else you can do, is there? Mike, what do you think about this situation? Is it is it one of them? I know a lot of people have been more sympathetic than others. Uh, what's your take on it? Um, I don't think you can you can afford not to be sympathetic. I, I echoing what what Terry said. Really, you know, you you go through for a lad. I mean. Let's let's just take it take away from from it, you know, our disappointment, the fact that we 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 brought him in and um, you know, early early signs when he when he came on in that first game against Palace and then started the Watford game, didn't he? I, I thought you can see him here. He's got the, the physical attributes to, to to do a decent job for us. He's only going to get you know stronger. Um and obviously he suffers that injury and, and it's been issues ever since. Let's let, let's take away our disappointments. Put yourself in his in his shoes and, and in, in his mindset. You know, he must his head must be absolutely battered by all this because, you know, he, he's wasted a good, good two years of his career. You know, with with injuries and you know it's he never would have thought coming to the Premier League. You know, playing for for our club and having the exposure that he's got that he would be spending ninety eight percent of his time on the treatment table and trying to work his way back. So mentally, it must be really tough for him. He can't do the job he's getting paid for. 
um, when he came on for Hamez the, the, against um, against Palace, and he saw like a little smirk on his face, and he was just delighted just to see him back on the pitch in an Everton shares, and you thought, you know, the, the start of things to come for the lad, and I was delighted for him, and then you start hearing whispers then, I think it was Sunday, wasn't it, on, on Twitter, and we, we started to get some confirmation, and um, we were told, we were told Sunday, yeah, it is true. Um, so, it's not as bad as, as maybe a lot of people think, but it's not, it's certainly not great, the fact that his season's over. But like Terry said, I thought we'd see him for 10 or 15 minutes at a time, wasn't going to be starting any kind of games. Um, but, yeah, it's it's really hard, isn't it? Because you you, you do want him, to, want him to feature, you want him to be a big part of that squad. But seeing him, you know, I know he's not particularly broken down, but clearly not playing football at a competitive level for over eighteen months it is having impact on other other parts of his of his uh, his body really, and they're obviously that little bit weaker. So you know he's gonna be he's gonna be more susceptible to little little tweaks here and there. But anything like that, I, I didn't think it would be a anything like that, this kind of freak injury, someone's fallen onto his knee and he's, he's now out for the six or eight weeks. He just thought, you know, little hamstring strains, groin strains, things like that because of not having the intensity um, of, of Premier League football for so long. But Gutton, um, I hope he gets back and I hope he can stay fit and we can get, you know, 30, 35 games a season from him. That would be fantastic. I just I just don't know whether we're going we're gonna to see him in terms of playing regular football, to be honest. That was the last thing I was going to ask before we finish up, was with that in mind, obviously we discussed in the previous show about uh, strengthening for next summer. Do we buy another player to maybe take over that role to protect us from the potential of more injuries? I think we do, don't we? Yeah. 100%. Sorry, 100%. We... Even even with Gabam and fully fit, I think we need a better centre midfielder as well. You know, you got Takora, you got Allen, you got Davies, you got Gomez. We need to cover. We need to cover enough. Yeah, you, need a, you, need, you need another one. Someone. Maybe another even another. Support. I'll be honest. Maybe even another two. I think we need to cover enough bases that we don't need to have a Gomez or a Sigurdsson playing in that midfield, particularly in a defensive role. There shouldn't be a need for either of them to play any role that requires them to do defensive dogged work because they aren't capable of it. Yeah, and Delft's just Delft might as well not exist. Delft, we <laughs> might as well not exist. But yeah, as I say, I think that's the only way I can say it. He needs to be the 25th man. Plan your squad as if he's not going to be well, there. He's quite, he's, quite he's quite literally, that's a shirt number. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, there we go. It's there meant go. to be. Just plan your squad as if he's not there, and if he is there, it's a nice bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus, make, yeah. You can't make any, like, you know, any guarantees that he's going to be available. I hope he is, because, you know, it's not fair on the lads. You know, yes, to be, to, yeah. But he's, um, he's just got to concentrate on pre-season now and starting the season fit. Certainly, yeah. And with that in mind, obviously, before we wrap it up, obviously, we do wish John Philippe Gabamon another speedy recovery, because... You know, no one deserves to be going through what he's going through. So, you know, all the best to him and hopefully see him back very soon next season. And, you know, let's hope next season's the start, just the start of his time here where we can actually see what he can do. Yeah, so, with that in mind, like, we'll leave it at that. Uh, let us know your opinions on the government situation and drop us a comment, give this video a like and subscribe. And until next time, thank you for tuning in on the Toffee Blues. I'm the champion, I'm the champion.